lesson today. It's a wonderful lesson. And we are looking forward to having Minister Blue lead us in our discussion this morning. So let us receive him at this time. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Good to see each and every one of you here. Welcome to you who are here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those who are viewing online. We greet you in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Welcome. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this now time. Now, Father God, as we endeavor to study your word, uh, open our hearts, our minds, our spirit to what thus says the word of God, that we may receive it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Uh, the lesson this morning entitled Jairus' Daughter and the Bleeding woman is not an unusual message. Uh, the story itself is a familiar story. You have heard it preached and you have read it numerous of times. Uh, this morning when the Lord woke me up, I said, Lord, I don't know how to present this in any other way than we normally present it. Right. So I said, Lord, help me because I want to present this in a way for us now in 2024, March 10th. Because there's some things going on in this world that's affecting all of us. It doesn't matter where you live. Uh, it's still affecting us. So this morning, as an introduction, I want to present to you, before we get into this lesson, I, I, as we study the Word of God, I want you to be on the lookout for four things as we study this lesson. Uh, number one, uh, there must, someone is hearing the Word of God. Uh, let, me, let me step back for a minute. When we talk about faith, show me your faith. What does it look like? Somebody show me what faith looks like. You do have faith, right? So what does it look like? Not seen. Not seen, huh? Okay. I'm going to set the stage for some things. Uh, let me use uh, someone real quick, real quick. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the first verse. Hebrews chapter 11, the first verse. That says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I submit to you that in this story, you're going to see four elements coming out of here. First, there must be a hearer of the word. A hearer of the word. Secondly, look at the situation, which is uh, we're going to be looking at in this story, the situation. Look at the situation. Fourth is the hope that these individuals have as it relates to their situation. Uh, there's a hope. And finally, uh, be on the lookout for the results or the evidence that's going to be presented here in these stories. It is important because those elements of hearing, situation, uh, hope, uh, uh, evidence, we need those now in our lives. You say you got faith. I once again, what does it look like? Where is your faith? How much faith do you have? You know, we had a mild winter. Right? And how many of you, by a show of hands, went out and tried out your snowblower? <laughs> Not a one, huh? Question, 
how do you know it worked? Until the moment that you need it, then you pull it out. And you are hoping that it works. Hmm. Let's take a look at this story. Jesus is now in the scene. And as he's coming, uh, getting out of the boat, the crowd begins to gather. And you notice something about Jesus. I love Jesus because wherever Jesus is, there typically is a crowd. <laughs> there's, there's a crowd that forms when Jesus comes on the scene. Uh, our scripture this morning is going to be coming from Luke chapter 8. We're going to look at verse 40 through 56. Verse 40 through 56. If I had to do a subtitle to uh, the, the, the heading here, Jairus' daughter and the bleeding woman, I would, I would submit to you and say something like, faith in action. Faith in action. Let's get into the story. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. That's good. They're waiting for Jesus. They're waiting on Jesus. Verse 41, and behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. Well, question one, why does he's requesting Jesus to come into his house? Uh, verse 42 tells us, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But he went, but as he went, the people surrounded him or thrown him. Question one for you in this story. Where is uh, the, the, why does Jairus seek out Jesus? because he has a need, the circumstance has occurred, right? Why does he put his hope in Jesus? Is a question one, here's another question. What, did you consider this is his first encounter with Jesus? Meeting him face to face, I mean. I'm sure he had heard about him and the things he has done for others. I mentioned this morning in this story, look for these four things, a hearing, a situation, hope, and evidence of it. Uh, the Bible tells us that one of the ways that uh, we get faith is through hearing the word of God. Thank God we have a wonderful pastor who preaches and teaches the word of God. It is important in order for you to feed your faith, you first have to have something the word of God to hear. It's faith that I need. Hmm, Jarius says, I got a situation. My daughter is dying, my only daughter. And I am going to meet this man named Jesus. Because I heard what he has done for others. And surely if he could do it for others, I got hope that he can do something for my daughter. My God. Jarius, who's Jarius? Who's Jarius? It tells us right there. What is Jarius? He's a leader of the synagogue. He was a keeper of the synagogue. Keeper of the synagogue. Interesting choice. Who needs faith? We all need faith. We all need, even the preacher needs faith. <laughs> we all need faith. I, I, I said, why, why was it significant to point out that he's a leader of a synagogue? His circumstance could have been, he could have been just uh, any other person with the same circumstance. My daughter's dying. I, I, I said to myself, well, maybe blue because we all need it. We can't all identify with 
his profession, but we can identify with his situation. I need help. Forty-three. And a woman, as he goes with Jerry, is on his way to the house. This woman, I'm on verse 43, having an issue of blood, how many years? Twelve, Twelve years. Which has spent what? All, All how many? Some? All. All. Her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. That's a dire situation. Have you ever been in a situation where you spent all your money on something and it just didn't work out? How many of you were just not upset with the outcome, but you was upset with yourself? You ever said to yourself, why did I do that? Because I have a need. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you can help me, physician. That's why I came to you. Help me. So he's on his way. You got the picture? He's on his way with Jerry. And as he's going, he's interrupted or he's stopped by this woman, this situation, situation. And it came she came behind him. Before I get to 44, here's another thing. Do you suggest, let me ask a question. Has she ever met him before? Does the, does the scripture indicate, he, has she ever met him before? So here's another one that I can, I can think about. Heard about him. Heard about him. And her circumstances were such that I spent everything else, I don't have any more money to go to the doctors, and when I did, they, did, they couldn't heal me. I'm going to try him. I'm going to try Jesus. She came behind him and touched the border of his garments, and immediately, the scripture says, immediately, She's cured. She's healed. Where I'm going, sisters and brothers, with this is how do you know you have faith until the circumstances of life gets you to move? If this lady never had an issue of blood, how would she know the status of her faith, that she had some faith. And on top of that, how does she know who to put her faith? Because remember, well, as long as I had money, I'm putting my faith in the doctors. It wasn't, it wasn't until she had spent all her money, her circumstance, the issue of blood was still there. But because I don't have the means to seek the doctors anymore, I gotta try somebody else. I gotta try something else. But I heard about a man hearing, hearing, let me suggest to you, hearing the word of God will help you in growing your faith. Hearing the word of God. Hmm. And when she touched him, her issue, <laughs> the blood issue was resolved. I find this, and Jesus said, who touched me? That must have been some kind of touch. Imagine, if you will, you already know this. There was a crowd of folks. There were so many folks pressing all around him on every side. <laughs> Can you imagine? You've been to places where crowds have gathered and uh, you find yourself trying to maneuver to get out or get in. Uh. <laughs> and when everybody denied who touched him, Peter and they that with him said, Master, the multitude, these, all these people around you 
<laughs> and they're pressing up against us. What do you mean, who touched you? But it was a different type of touch. It wasn't one that we were just rubbing elbows. It was such, I would like to suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, the, the need, the circumstances of this lady, which, by the way, they, you know, they don't name her. They don't put a name with her. I thought about that. I said to myself, it ain't about the name. <laughs> it's about her condition. <laughs> Whether it's Martha, Mary, or whatever. It's my condition. That's what I want to focus on. Not my name. And Jesus said, somebody touched me. Somebody. Somebody. I would like to submit to you as well uh, that she could not have drawn out of the master what she needed unless the need was so great to match up with her faith. She had to have, I know what the need is. I know who I got hope in. But I need some kind of faith that moves me to do something, that moves me to take action. So faith was her healing. Her faith. In whom? In Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus. She didn't know whether he could or not. She hoped. But it was faith that moved her into action. I hope that snow blower cranks up because that snow is piling up out there. And what happens when it doesn't? The snow is still there. It doesn't go anywhere. Let's move on with this. Any questions? Any comments? Help me. Let me reiterate. When I started our discussion this morning, I asked you to be on the lookout for four things in these stories. Hearing, look at the circumstances of the situation, uh, look for hope, and then finally, look for the results or the evidence or the proof of something. I had a comment that scripture tells us that all we need the faith that we need is the size of a mustard seed, the measure of faith, and that's a small amount of faith. A little bit to trust them. That mustard seed, that, that, that little faith, has to be, something has to be done with it. To say you got it, the next part of that is, what are you going to do with it? I can have a pocket full of money, and I don't, by the way. Um, what am I going to do with it? If you heard I had a pocket full of money, and you come to me and say, uh, Brother Blue, I got a need, I need $100, and you heard I had a pocket full of money, that's the only reason you came to me, because you heard. Now, you're hoping that I, my generosity is going to be to help you out. It's not until I deliver on something that she said, ooh, I'm so glad I came to him. But what happens, sisters and brothers, when you come to Brother Blue and I say, I'm sorry, I can't help you out today. Your hope is like, hmm. Or conversely, if I help you out today, you find yourself in that situation a month later, and guess who you think of? Huh? Brother Blue. Mm. The second piece of this story. Interesting. So Jesus says, somebody touched me. And Jesus says, not, it's just not any kind of touch. For I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Power has gone out of me. Now, look at this circumstance. What was her need? She had an issue with blood. Right? She needed healing. She needed healing. She didn't talk to Jesus. 
she just reached out and touched the hem of the garment. Not just touch him, just touch the garment. That says something right there. What type of power did this man have that his clothes also had? Uh. She knew he was the healer. She heard. How did she know? She heard about him. Pardon me? She heard about it. It wasn't until she took some action, and as a result of the action, it showed proof. Now I'm healed. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. You first going to receive the proof. If there's no proof I'm healed, in her case, I'm talking about her. What happens if she didn't have, it didn't dry up? What happens if Jesus didn't heal her? as she expected to be healed. Just suppose, what would have happened? Do you think her faith would have increased? He says, I perceive something has gone on. This is interesting. But it wasn't the garment that healed her. It wasn't the garment. She knew that Jesus would heal her. It is the power of Jesus. But you have to have, what does she have? Faith. She has to have the faith. But before she can have the faith, she says, I hope he can. I hope he can. That's why I showed up today. I hope he can. Her, listen to it. Her faith moved into action. If her faith didn't move into action, she would have never reached out. She would have just hoping. I just got some hope. I love hope, but I got to have more than hope. Let's move on and look at another circumstance. You might say Jarius' situation was more critical than hers. Twelve years she lived with it. She's still living. Let's move on here. So Jesus, I, I, I want to finish that up. He possesses what she needs. But it's because first she heard, she has hope. Her situation is, I got an issue of blood. I'm hoping that he can help me with this. And when I get there, I see all these people around him. Question, how am I going to get to him? Put yourself in her shoes. How am I going to get to him? Can't you imagine? She says, wait a minute, I can't even get to him. I don't know if my hope is going to do much for me now. I got hope, but I can't get to that next step. We go back to the faith. And what I'm suggesting is I need that to take action. It is her faith that moved her to take action. Her hope is in him. You look at what a puzzle look on your face. Help me out, anybody. I can have hope. I'm hoping that somebody helps me if my car breaks down on the road. I'm hoping. Cars are still going by, one by one. Nobody stops. But it's until that one person stops, he is now the proof, the evidence uh, that my hope has now moved to say, there's somebody. I have moved from hope to the evidence, the faith piece, the proof. That's all I'm suggesting to you. She had the hope, but hope wasn't going to heal her. She had to move to the faith piece to take action to seek out Jesus. Let me move on. Maybe we'll get it better in Jerry's situation. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, fell down before him. She declared unto him, may for all the people for what cause she had touched him 
and now she was healed immediately. That's interesting. I don't have time uh, to look at that verse and compare it to the one on, on 45. Um, but the fact of the matter is, she now has the evidence that she's healed. What is the evidence that she has now that she healed? What's the proof, guys? It stopped. It stopped. She moved from hope, taking faith, moving into action, and now got the evidence, the, the results of it. And she says, I am healed, hallelujah. And I assure you, after 12 years of going to a doctor, she ran and to, to whoever she could find, especially those that she knew, and says, I am healed. She had a testimony. She got a testimony now. She sure does. That's why that's important to share the results. Especially with those who know your situation. <laughs> now don't be like most folks, look what I did. <laughs> you tell them who did it. <laughs> it was Jesus. Give God the glory. Immediately she was healed. And verse 40 says, As he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith. What did it say? What does 48 say? Last part. Thy faith. Thy faith made thee whole. Because you had faith and put it into action, if she never would have put that faith into action, I submit to you, she would still be dealing with the issue of blood. Go, thy faith has made thy whole. Go in peace. God be with you. While he was yet speaking, there came one from Jairus' household, saying to Jairus, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Now, I thought about this. I'm just a natural human being. If I uh, am coming to see you, sister, and I say, would you come with me? And we're headed out this door. And somebody interrupts us. And you turn your attention to them. I'm saying to myself, didn't you just say you going with me? Why are you giving this person your attention? That's interesting. But Jarius, uh, you know, he has a need as well. The key is here. Uh, and I bring it to the natural. I got to bring it to the natural because that's what I would be thinking. Come on, Jesus, let's go. You know, your priorities should be with me first. But I love how this played out because there's a timing factor here. There's a timing factor here that we have to consider. I'm not only going to take care of you, Jairus, Jerry's must have had enough faith to say, you know what, I'm going to be patient and wait on it. My God. That's another thing about faith. That's a, there's another element with that faith. It's a timing. He may not come when I want him, but he's always on time. Come on, Jairus, let's go. Uh, they come and say, your daughter's dead. Trouble not the master. Now, at that point, Jesus, uh, verse 50 said, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not. Fear not, Jerry. Fear, fear, fear not. Believe only. That's all. That's the first thing that came out of his mouth. Fear not and believe only. Well, guys, I told you I'm human. By you telling me, you come and tell me, 
my loved one is dead, and you telling me, sister, fear not, only believe, I'm right now, my fear is off the scales. Okay? So Jesus understood the human side of Jairus when he heard that news. Your daughter is dead. Immediately, he addresses Jairus, not the situation. He says, listen, fear not, Jairus, only believe, only believe. Let me move on, let me move on, let me move on. And she shall be made whole. What a statement to make. Mm. But this is Jesus. Verse 51 says, and when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in. Save Peter, except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. Why do you think he only allowed those folks in? Come on, anybody. Because they were his disciples. They are disciples. What about the father and mother? He says here, the scripture says, and when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in except, say, Peter, James, John, and the father and the mother of the maiden, of the young girl who's laying dead, who's dead, according to uh, the servant. Why is that? I don't think he wanted everybody to know what he was getting ready to do. Okay. Okay. Because there was a lot of people out there. Many years ago, Many years ago, I used to do a hospital ministry. And the pastor who, my mentor, who was teaching me and following me, I remember the first day when we were visiting the hospital, we were in the parking lot. And uh, he says, first we're going to pray before we go in. And we pray. The second thing he says to me, look me straight at, he put his arms on my shoulder and looked me straight in the eye. He says, if you lack faith, you can't come in. He says, if you lack the faith to believe that Jesus Christ can do, <laughs> oh, can fix it. He said, if you don't have that, I, I, don't come in with me. Stay outside. You pray for me. If a circumstance, and Jesus says, listen, these are the ones I need to come in with me. I want to be there with me. There's a reason behind it. You don't want, why would you call somebody up and say, pray for me, and they ain't got no prayer life? Somebody help me with that. Why would you call somebody up saying, my light bill is off? I'm out, I'm lying lights off because I didn't pay the light bill, and theirs off too. How can, how can we help each other? Huh? That ain't going to help me. Let me move on to this. I know y'all getting tired of blue now. And what he heard, <laughs> Lord help me. He said, if you come on in, these, these are the ones that came in. And all the weeping and bewailing her but he said, weep not, she is not dead, but sleep. <laughs> and they laughed him to scorn. Now, now, when he came in, let me set the stage. When he came in, you got all these people in there. Got a, they used to pay people to mourn. <laughs> all the servants in there crying and weeping. That's why he told Jerry, listen, I'm going to put these folks out. The only people I need to come with me is... Peter, James, John, you and your wife, come on in. The rest of y'all, get on out. When he walked in, all those people all over the floor shouting, moving, just crying. And ain't nothing happening. All that crying and weeping, and the girl is still dead. But he says, observation. He says, now listen. He says, don't, in other words, ignore all that crying and stuff. Family, she ain't dead. She just sleeping. And they laughed at him. 
knowing that she was dead. And he put them... Well, y'all said it. That, is that what the word says? Put them out. Now, I know some of y'all ain't bold enough to do that, but never mind. That's some kind, that's, just, that's the faith. Yeah. That, that will move you into action. Mm. And took her by the hand and called, saying, make me arise. Now, first of all, they had to have some faith. Here's the action piece of this. Jesus says, listen, before we go in, let me tell you what's going to go down. The only people I want in that room when we go in here, I'm going to clear the room. The only people I need in here is Peter, John, and James. You, Jerry, and your wife. Okay? I'm going to clear the room because I need some people with faith. I ain't asking you how much faith. Oh, God. I just need for you to have some faith. Y'all keep talking about that mustard seed. Let me tell you something. That's the, that's, that's the minimum. That's the minimum. But some circumstance will call for more than a minimum. Did you hear what I said? Some situations is going to require more than the minimum of faith. You got to have more than the minimum. And then, so he puts them out. He calls her name. And verse 55, I mean, 53 says, he says, maiden, arise. And 55 says, and her spirit came again, and she rose straightway, and, she command, and he commanded to give her meat. Now, right there, guys, listen. Uh, whether I got a little faith or a lot of faith, let me tell you this. I bet you their faith increased then. Come on, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the, uh, the two scenarios, um, I've learned that faith is something that is not taught, it's something that is learned. And so from the experience that the one with the issue of blood has, she had experienced something for so long that she had known that putting her faith in doctors did not get her anywhere. But yet, putting her, putting her faith in seemingly her last hope of who everyone is saying that the Messiah is, and stepping out on faith and pressing towards her way just to see if I can get close to him when I get healed. Amen. Not even asking for, not even verbally asking, but physically touching. But then also, in the same sense, they laugh at him when he says she's not dead, she's asleep. And yet, um, I believe Jesus, for lack of better words, has a sense of, let me show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> Amen. And so with that, their faith has not been taught to them, but the faith has been learned that this is the Messiah, or this is Jesus the Christ. And now they have learned that <clears throat> there's power in his word. Amen. Amen. Well said. Straightway she got up. He commanded them to give her something to eat. And the parents were astonished. <laughs> but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. They were rejoicing. What a time. What a time. Both people, the lady with the issue of blood, or Jairus with the daughter who's dying, needed a miracle. One needed a healing miracle. The other one needed a resurrection miracle. And they both got it from the same source, Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Why did Jesus tell them not to tell? Anybody? Real quick. Why you, she, our question is, is, why did Jesus uh, tell them not to tell anybody? Don't tell anybody yet. The short answer, his time hasn't came, come yet. There's still work for him to do before his ultimate destination to the cross. So there's a timing issue here. It wasn't time for him to be revealed among the multitudes yet. Not among the multitudes. 
Last thing I want to illustrate here is Jesus offers us hope in desperate situations. We only call, he only calls on us to have faith in him. So Jesus offers us hope, and then Jesus plus faith equals the hope. He is the hope. We got to put our hope. First, I'm going to start out with hope. I'm going to believe. After I, I got to move. It's a process, folks. I'm going to start. I'm, I'm hoping the car cranks up when I turn the key. Okay? I turn that key. That car cranks up. I believe because it's running. I put it in gear. It starts moving. I, my, I went from believing to the evidence. That's my faith. That's the evidence. Are you with me? The last thing I want to do, I don't have time to do the facts, go to the last screen, and next week's lesson is going to concern, uh, uh, entitled The Rising of Lazarus. We will be looking at John chapter 11, verse 38 to 44, and I will also be superintendent teacher chapter as well. I want to thank you for hearing. Let me say a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father God, thank you for this opportunity. We bless Ask that you bless us and prepare us for the next part of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.